It's for me to be here in this Bishop Kiva College, Richie. Today I'm here to speak about the intelligent design of the universe. It's between pattern and design. And one more thing, for example, if you do a design, if you do some cooking or some rangoli or something, and it is reflecting your mind, right? You have a purpose in doing that. For example, I went to my house and my mom who was so old, she prepared some rasam that is specific for her. So eating that, I can understand that she has done it. Her purpose of doing it is so that I will know that she has done it and she loved me so much. That same way, if somebody has designed it, he wants to show it to you that he has done so that you will know that person. You will know the purpose behind the design. So these are the two things behind. There will be an intelligence, there will be a purpose behind the design. And that intelligent designer will want the other person to know that he has designed it. So today, let us take an argument because Richard Dawkins and so many other people like Carl Sagan says that there is no purpose in this world. And we are all insignificant in the huge dark cosmos. So amidst those voices, if you want to know whether rationally is there an intelligent design or not. Because it should not be just based on your blind faith. It should be behind reason. That's why last four years I have done an intense research on cosmology, biology, astronomy, geology on different topics to understand how all these things are working. Is there someone behind it? Somebody is working behind the scenes. Is there a purpose to my life? Where from I came? How will I differentiate good from wrong? What, where will I go after I die? Origin, meaning, morality and destiny. These are the four questions that were behind this. So based on this, if unless I have an intelligent designer behind everything, behind my life, I will not know where from I came. Why am I here? Where will I go after I die? How will I know this is right or this is wrong? Because nowadays truth is surrounded by lies. And I don't know what is truth because if it's many say that truth is relative. But if truth has to be absolute, then there should be a person who defines what is that truth. That's why I did this research and I wrote a book. You can Google Beyond the Boundaries of Science, Exploring the Cosmic Story. It's available at Amazon. And also I'm making a series of episodes called The Grand Cosmic Story. It's around 20 episodes just now, first is released and the second one next week. It's on black holes, supernovae and others. You can subscribe to my channel and you will get all the 20 episodes. So now, today I'm going to speak to you about four topics. Argument, my argument based on my research from four subjects. Cosmology, astronomy, physics and biology. I know what is geocentric universe? That earth is the center and all the things are revolving around the earth. Sun, moon, everything and we are the center of the universe. So that's why that and people were thinking that even those days state and the church were together. So the, the people started interpreting even the Bible based on that. The whole thing, every subject were interpreted thinking that we are the center of the universe. So when it was interpreted like that, the Pope thought might be the people who are telling that it is wrong can be wrong. So that's why when Copernicus, he was a priest and that's called Copernican revolution. So when the priest did that one, he was, uh, he, people were not like he knew that within so, the one, one year before his death, he published a book on the revolution. And then Galileo, he built telescope, he looked through the telescope, he saw the, uh, the mountains in the Venus, he saw craters in the Mars, he could see a lot of moons, he knew that earth is not the center, 
How can you challenge the thing which 2000 years, so many years people have been believing and lying? But he got the boldness. He wrote a book and so he was called the Pope. And he said, Saint Augustine long back has written, based on this interpretation, this is right, he argued. Because Bible never said that. But people believed in a wrong interpretation. So Galilee was put under house arrest. But later, this Copernican revolution was proved to be right. That we are not the center of the universe, but uh, everything else. We are revolving around the sun. So that was the first major change. And then came Newton. He saw beautifully, he just found out how the planets, all the planets are revolving around the sun and he calculated the orbit. But he could not calculate the orbit of Mercury. When he was calculating the orbit of Mercury, Mercury's orbit was doing something a little deformed it was compared to the other orbits. So then Einstein came forward and said, he brought in a major revolution. He brought in a theory called General Theory of Relativity. The general theory of relativity said mass and time and space are relative to one another. While Newton said time and space are absolute, Einstein said they are relative. So if you have a heavy mass, it can deform. That's why the sun's heavy mass deforms the space-time of Mercury. And he could explain why an asteroid in space is aging slower. How time runs slower in space in high altitudes. So people were wondering what is this theory those days. I am going to tell you a lot of stories. So I am not going to make it boring. A lot of stories. This story about three great scientists. That is Albert Einstein. And uh, uh, Father George Lemaitre and Hubble. These are the three scientists who were the reason for this great shift in understanding. Because Einstein brought in this theory, but his theory was showing something different. His theory was telling that the universe was expanding at a great rate. But till that time, people believe the universe is eternal. They believe in a steady state theory that there is no change, nobody is behind the universe. The universe ex existed forever and it is already in the steady state. That's called steady state. But Einstein's theory showed something different. So he was not able to believe. So he put in a constant to stop the universe from expanding. It's called cosmological constant. And then Hubble. He's a scientist in Edison, a scientist named Hubble. So he directed his telescope from the Mount Wilson Observatory and he saw that Milky Way is not the only galaxy. There are so many galaxies out there. And that's when he got convinced that we are not, we are living in a very huge universe. Very difficult. If there is a creator, he might be beyond your wildest imagination and dreams. Because I am going to show you the vastness of the universe just in two minutes. See, this is the Milky Way galaxy. We are here in this. There are four arms. In the four major arms, there is a small minor arm called Orion arm. In the inner rim of that minor arm, we are located. If you want to meet your friend from one end to the other, if you want to travel, for example, you need 100,000 years to travel if you travel at the speed of light. What is the speed of light? 186,000 miles per second. How many times you can revolve around, uh, go around the earth in speed of like in one second? Let's assume you have got a spacecraft. You want to go around the earth. In one second you can go seven and a half times. That is the speed of light. With that speed, you need 100,000 years. How massive our galaxy is. This galaxy is located inside a local group of galaxies. You can see here Andromeda galaxy and many others. Andromeda is going to clash with us in 2 billion years, scientists say. And then next, this large group is inside another large local group. And then we are inside a Virgo cluster, and which is inside a Virgo supercluster. 
that's called Laniakia supercluster. Recently, scientists have found that we are in a cosmic web, a big cosmic web, and we are in a, we are one among the two trillion galaxies. Come, put the zero for trillions. You will know. In the observable universe, you are just one among the two trillion galaxies. This is the observable universe holding around 2 trillion galaxies and its radius is estimated to be an unfathomable 46.5 billion light years. I believe what lies in the world that cannot be observed could be even more massive of which our known universe is just a tiny slice. Observable universe, whatever we can see is such a huge one. Whatever we cannot see, how much huge it should be. This is just a part of my episode, the first episode, which because I'm just giving a clip to show how vast the universe is. Now, the second first discovery Hubble did is this universe is so huge. The second discovery, what he did is the universe is expanding. It's if for example, an ambulance is coming towards you, what will happen? The pitch will increase. increase. If the ambulance is moving away from you, the pitch will decrease. The same manner, if the galaxies are moving away from one another, in the electromagnetic spectrum, it will be shifted towards the red end. If it is moving towards one another, then it is towards the blue end. So now, Hubble is seen through his window of his observatory and he finds the galaxies are moving away from one another and he concludes that the universe is expanding. Now Father George Lemaitre, he was working on Einstein's equation. So he got now a theory that says the universe is expanding though Einstein has put a constant and here there is an experiment by Hubble. So he goes and meets Einstein and says uh, that your equations are right because Hubble's experiment is exactly proving Einstein could not believe because if there is a beginning then there should be a creator behind it. If there is a universe which existed forever then there is no need to believe. That's why he said your mathematics is right but your physics is atrocious. He could not believe and then they called Einstein to meet um, Edwin Hubble in the Mount Wilson and all the media were waiting, was waiting outside and um, Einstein goes inside, looks through the telescope and then comes out and tells everybody, now I see the necessity of a beginning. Time, space and matter, everything started at one point because if you extrapolate back, 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 you get a singularity, a single point where time, space and matter started. So that's why many started to wonder. Bible is clearly telling the first verse said, In the beginning God made heaven and earth. People are not ready to believe that. But now, whole evidence is pointing to it. Cosmology is pointing to it. So that's when they, they were, uh, this Fred Hoyle, an atheist, he coined the term Big Bang. To us, a derision in term is just a funny way. It's not a big bang, it's not exploded, it's expansion. So it's, he coined the term big bang based on that. So this is a major revolution in cosmology that there is a beginning and the universe what we are living in is so huge and next come to astronomy. So here, this is the way I was telling the balloon, if you expand, you will start at a single point where it started to expand. So this is the way our universe is expanding from a single point they concluded. And then this discovery was also proved by two other scientists. Recently, some 50 years back, Arno Penzias and Wilson, they were having an antenna. So from the antenna, they were getting a lot of noises from everywhere in the space. So then they understood the whole space, they can see microwave background radiation, the relic radiation from the first light. The first thing that happened after the universe came into existence is light. Let there be light. The first thing, the light photons which were trapped inside the atoms came out. And that's when the whole universe started becoming, the light started to come out of darkness. 
and then the first stars came out and then this first stars formed and then they exploded giant supernovas and that's when the whole universe was lit with light now whatever sun we are having it's the population three stars that third generation star and we are that star is so important because some stars will explode as supernovae some stars will end up as black hole but our sun is still having a solid 5 billion years so that sort of things make people to wonder is there a designer behind it because we are we living in a designer universe people are wondering the designer babies have you heard of designer babies people modify now genes and genetics and try to make babies um, who can become so beautiful who can become so tall so intelligent but they i feel they play god if they do something wrong the baby will become the opposite so in the same way there is a designer behind the gene in making a designer baby there is a designer behind the universe in making so next is astronomy if you come to astronomy people have found that how many planets are in our solar system eight, eight. okay so pluto is no more considered a planet because many planets bigger than that they have found many planets and it no more a planet but in this four there are four gas planets and four terrestrial planets so the four terrestrial planets are mercury venus earth mars very good so they are all solid they have a solid core and the other four are gas planets they are giant planets nobody can live in that so if you want to live it's called hospitability hospita hospitable correct yes if you want to live in a planet it should have that hospitable nature that you have um, it should be able to uh, sustain life for example what are the ingredients needed for life can somebody tell carbon oxygen nitrogen forgot the most basic thing water water correct so then so like this everything so many ingredients you need so we are living scientists are found something specific you go and check up privileged planet we are living because there were two things the one is when they saw this universe is so huge two set of thoughts came into picture the first was promoted by carl sagan you can go and google his episodes called cosmos so i have my episode is coming a uh, little explanation for his thing episode in this cosmos he says that we are living in a just we are a insignificant people just revolving in an insignificant planet in the huge dark cosmos so that is his thought because he uh, he was the main person who sent two spacecrafts 1977 into space what are they voyager 1 and voyager 2 so voyager 1 and voyager 2 they sent and those spacecrafts were revolving around the four giant planets for 13 years 13 years they were revolving around them trying to take pictures of them how are they is there any life behind them and afterwards they left our solar system and now still now it's it's gone it's into the interplanetary space So some of the scientists thought, okay, there can be aliens. How many of you want to meet aliens? Good. <laughs> so yeah, I want to meet. So aliens, you know, many people want to meet aliens, and some have reported. One lady I have just seen, she has two alien babies and two in uh, earthly babies. She has given a lot of big talk also, and one person has written that he was abducted by an alien, and recently, some ten years back. in one of the tv channel they saw in kolkata they could see a very fast moving object in the sky so the whole tv and many newspapers it came but then they found it was venus and similarly many of the people who thought it was an alien they found it was either some planets or sometimes when you want to cheat an enemy country you send out flares that is called jam like for example our i am entering into an enemy country and an enemy aircraft wants to hit me so what i do is i send out some flares 
So that instead of hitting me, they, they, their radar will lock on to the wrong thing and hit that. So when such things go, people think, okay, something is falling from heaven, might be an alien. And then recently, Storm Area 51, you can Google, it's a very funny incident. And in US, people, Facebook event, it, was, it has become a great Facebook event. They thought that an area called uh, 51, that uh, people, uh, that some alien spacecraft has fallen and some alien drivers are inside and the uh, US government has shielded them. So they wanted to storm it to see the alien spacecraft and the alien space pilots. So finally they were all sent out because telling that it was wrong information. So because we, are, we all want to know that something is behind everything and why we are not able to find, I will explain you these after some time. But now coming to this, in the voyage of 1 and 2, they kept a gramophone, it's called golden gramophone. In the golden gramophone, they recorded the voices from earth and they put how a man or a woman will look like and they did everything so that when it goes into space, some other intelligent aliens will find it and they will come and meet us. One person was even scared, don't send it. If they come and kill us. So there were a lot of one year talks going on whether to send that gramophone into that or not. So finally they put it and sent based on Carl Sagan's advice. So it went. But before entering, after Neptune, that Voyager 1, Carl Sagan said, turn back, take a picture. And then so the whole spacecraft turned its camera back and took a picture of our Earth and around six planets and the Sun. You know how the Earth looked like? A very tiny pale blue dot. Carl Sagan's famous book, Pale Blue Dot. So people started to wonder, we are not significant. In the whole vast dark cosmos, we are just a tiny dot. At the same time, sometime back again, three scientists, Jim Lowell, Frank Borman, and another scientist, they went first time to the moon, to the dark side of the moon. When they went to the dark side of the moon in Apollo in 1968, December, they went on the Christmas Eve. They went to the dark side and then returned back. When they came back, they saw the earth so beautifully lit and they could see that. And what came to their mind, you know, from the space they recited the first 10 verses of the Bible. Because when you see the sky, when you see the nature so beautiful, for them the creator came into their mind. So there are two views I wanted to say. It's our duty to find out which view is rational, which view is right. For example, either you can believe like Carl Sagan that we are not significant, we are just a tiny speck in the whole cosmos. Or you can believe like these three astronauts who went in Apollo 8 and they said that and they looked at the sky, they, it reflected the glory of God. So now coming to it, so you have to make your own arguments. So am I clear at this time? Okay, so now coming to it. This is a cosmology. Now coming to astronomy. I said there are four planets that are terrestrial and the other four planets that are gas giants. So now, you sh if you want to have life, you have that terrestrial, you need a terrestrial planet. Then you need water, correct? If you are just 20% away from the sun, our Earth's position, just 20% away from the sun, what will happen? Water will become ice. You cannot have liquid water. If you are just 5% towards the sun, you will become hot. The Earth will become very hot. And there will be no... Okay, it will become very dry and liquid water again will become, it will evaporate. So, Venus, why you are having a runaway greenhouse effect? Because it's very hot. So, life can exist. People, we send around 40 space missions to Mars. But Mars, there is no life. Because there is no atmosphere. You need atmosphere. You know, um, if you don't have an atmosphere, you cannot... You, you, have, you need oxygen. 
and again you need some gases to keep you from. Have you studied about greenhouse effect? So why do you have a greenhouse effect? To trap the temperature. What temperature? Because your carbon dioxide, all the greenhouse gases trap the temperature so that it keeps your, you warm. Okay, so that is the main reason and our atmosphere, mass atmosphere is 100% thinner than our atmosphere. So that is the reason, there is no life in Mars. So now, one more reason is we have a very good magnetic field and in our core, full rich iron and magnetic field because of it, it traps atmosphere like and holds it. So that is another reason. And then the other one is we have an ozone layer. Why do we have an ozone layer? To protect us from? Dangerous ultraviolet rays. And then we have a heliosphere to protect us beyond every planet, to protect us from dangerous cosmic rays. Who has put so many protections, so many protection? If you're sending your child out, you will send them with a lot of protections, right? So it's the same manner. If some intelligent designer has to put us in this planet, it looked as though everything has been planned. So that we will come into existence. The whole earth was waiting so that our life will come into existence. It looked like that. And then, you know, uh, another important thing is our position. Not only in our solar system is important. People thought, now let us now try to find out how is our position in Milky Way galaxy. So now we, I told you we are located in the inner rim of a minor arm. If you are in the center of a galaxy, now you would have been swallowed by a Bahamut black hole. There is people have found there is a very big black hole called Sagittarius A. At the center of every galaxy lives black holes and supernovas and very powerful stellar evolutionists happening there. So that's why if you move towards the center of the galaxy, you will be swallowed by that. And if you move away towards the end, there will be no elements. You need a periodic table, right? You need so many elements. How you get? Carl Sagan said, we are all star dust. It may be partially true. We need calcium in our bones. We need iron in our blood. And we need carbon. They all came off because of stars explosion. But we are not a star. We are not just a star star. We have a mind to think. And we have a soul and spirit to understand why am I here? What's my purpose? So we are just not a body. Some people say that we are our body and our brain are same and there is everything. Mind is the brain. But now recently neuroscientists have found that brain is something very complicated. Why nobody could do brain surgery till now? Brain transplant. Because it's so complicated and people are trying to find where is this mind, where is this emotions residing? Am I just a body? Am I just a material made of chemicals alone? Why do I love? Why do I admire beauty? Why do I have something behind all these things? That's no question science can answer. Even medical people cannot understand why we dream. If you ask so many researchers, the people have tried. Why we dream, people cannot answer. Why we love, why we love, a, why we enjoy music. Where from the language comes? All these things science cannot answer. There is a field called scientism. That science alone can explain everything. Science ultimately will win. Materialism is the absolute. But that theory has a big gap. So many things science cannot answer. The first one is how universe came from nothing. Why is there something rather than nothing? Where from this universe came? That's what the Big Bang. Time, space and matter started. If it has a star, who started it? Is the first question. The second question, why our earth is so beautifully tuned for life to exist? Our earth position inside the solar system, our earth position, our solar system's position inside the galaxy. And one more interesting thing is, 
We are located inside a position where if you look through it, we can look at the cosmos, whole cosmos. If we have been in some other position, we cannot look into the cosmos. So the position, in the correct position somebody has placed us so that we will look into it and understand. That's called measurability. How we can understand that it is beautifully designed. So that's why I said, if I make a, some beautiful dish, some tasty dish, I want people to know that I have done it. So that is a designer put in everything and wants people to know that he has done it by discovery. That's why for me, science pointed me to my creator. People say as you increase in science, you move away from God. But for me it was the opposite. When I did research, I found there is a designer behind everything who wants me to know him. That's the second. And the third, another interesting thing. The whole universe, it's till now I said about Earth and then about the Milky Way galaxy. But now scientists have found the third thing that is from physics. We spoke about cosmology, astronomy, now coming to physics. Physics, what they found is the whole universe is finely tuned. Stephen Hawking, he was a, he is an atheist. He says, why the universe started expanding at nearly the critical rate of expansion? Even now, so many billion years later, it is still expanding at that same critical rate of expansion. If it would have been a little smaller, by one part in 100 trillion trillion, the whole universe would have collapsed. A small change in the critical expansion. So they are wondering, a small change, why it is extricately finely tuned? Have you studied about proton to neutron ratio? The ratio is little changed, again, you won't get a periodic table. Similarly, force of gravity, which pulls you down when you are jumping. If it would have been little bigger, the galaxies cannot form. If it is little smaller, it will flung away. And similarly, the mass of the universe. Like this, scientists have found around 25 parameters that are extricately finely tuned. Now tell me, how is it possible? Now I am going to tell you a story. Assume you are all going in a spacecraft. We are all just now entering into a spacecraft and we are going to get into space. We are docking a spacecraft somewhere and we see a space station. We are entering into it. Then there is a mission there written, universe generating mission. So you go inside and try to see a lot of dials in front of you. Now you are a scientist and a physicist. You take your pen, start to see if this force of gravity is slightly changing left. Life cannot exist. The four forces, what are the four fundamental forces? Force of gravity, electromagnetic force, weak nuclear force, strong nuclear force. There are three forces which act on the minutest of minutest things. That is in an atom. What are the three forces that act in an atom? Electromagnetic force, strong nuclear force, weak nuclear force. And then the things which act on big things are, is the force of gravity. So now, each and every force is finely tuned. And one more interesting thing, have you heard of theory of everything? How many of you have heard of theory of everything? Okay, good. See, why am I not scientists are not able to find the beginning? <coughs> because scientists are breaking their head. Einstein said, I'm trying, the universe is looking like a closed box. I want to open it and find out, but I'm unable to open. He died without finding the theory of everything. And Stephen Hawking was after it. Theory of everything, because the theory of everything have to bring in all the four fundamental forces. Force of gravity that acts on big things, and the three fun small forces that electromagnetic force, weak and strong nuclear force that acts on small things. But you cannot bring in, they are not able to bring in. And that's why the theory of everything, he also, Stephen Hawking also died without finding it. And have you heard of God particle? <coughs> See, particle accelerators, big, big particle accelerators, like large Hadron Collider. 
They accelerate the particles at the speed of light, make them to collide with one another and get the smallest particle. So the God particle is called Higgs boson. It gives mass to the part other particles. So that, when they found that, now they have found the beginning condition they thought. But they could not find because there is another mystery. The whole universe, if it is 100% thing, only 4% is made of visible matter. The remaining things are dark matter and dark energy. So only 4% is, you can understand normal matter. So there are so many complications behind the scientists to find out how everything started. And that's when the second question, who find you the universe? Who is a person, if you go out and see the so many dials, and you see that all the dials are so finely tuned, how many of you can tell there is no designer? Lift your hands. Okay, get up. Tell me why there is no designer. <laughs> it's an interesting question. Who told? It's a nice. I'm so happy. So why do you feel that when you go and see at so many dials there, and uh, you are tuning the dials, and you still believe that there is nobody? Everything came on its own. Can you explain me? It's a good question. I'm so happy that you got up. Once more. Question me opposite. I'm happy to explain. I feel really happy. Uh, see, now you're going into uh, in a spacecraft, assume, and you are entering into a space shuttle, and there a space station. You see a universe generating machine. It has lot of dials. Okay, if I am the universe generator, I have to dial make the design. So if I change the force of gravity a little, life cannot exist. If I change the weak nuclear force a little, life cannot exist. If I change anything in that dials a little, no life can exist. So now I stand there and wonder, who is the person who has done this? So now that's what I say. But if you believe seeing that thing, seeing the universe, that everything is finely tuned, and still not believe there is a designer, can I know the reason? Now anybody else can answer. If you have an opposite, you are happy. If he cannot answer. Yeah, yeah. My next Sorry, uh, uh, not the interruption, but uh, I can give some uh, points like uh, it is not like uh, he said uh, there are uh, about uh, 25 parameters are uh, fine tuned. You know, new planets with uh, new possibilities, uh, planets with uh, uh, possibility of water, possibility of atmosphere, and uh, possibility of uh, right amount of gravity, everything. But uh, if you find out Still we are finding out new planets. Uh, it is a kind of uh, probability that we are having uh, uh, all the parameters are set in the right ways. So it's a matter of probability. It may be. Yes, okay, got it. Intelligent aliens beyond. That question will answer this. For example, Scientists are now trying to find around 4,500 exoplanets have been found. Exoplanets are planets revolving around the sun. Like our planet is revolving around the sun, there are so many planets that are revolving around the sun. Okay, so if there are so many planets that are revolving around the sun, then scientists are trying to find why can't some of the planets be habitable. And that's what, it's, there is a great search. Now around 4500 Kepler satellite is the one which is looking out to find. They have found many super earth. Super earth is earth sized planets bigger than earth. But they are so hot. Till this time whatever they have found are hot super earth. And one more thing is they might have found water. But water is not the only thing. There have to be so many things which has to meet. So they thought okay. There is a scientist called 1951, Ernico Fermi, you go at Google. He was one day having a lunchtime chat with his friends and he looked at everybody and he asked, where is everybody? 
That's a question. Where is everybody? There are so many planets. Now we have found our satellites are showing so many planets revolving around sun. Then there should be some intelligence behind it. Where are they? So this is called Fermi's paradox. The probability that life can exist, but still now we have not found anyone. Because if there is an intelligent life beyond, they should have made their own spacecraft and come and met us. Or something like that, or we could have found. And Enrico Fermi for me and one more person, he uh, pointed his telescope towards all the stars and he sent out messages after messages for many years, but no return. And he was trying to listen for four years from few particular stars they found life can exist. But still now, there is no life. But even if life is formed by chance, that does not mean that we are special. That's what I'm telling. And one more thing is for me, why I found it's more convincing is, your question is answered? Okay. So, see they feel that because might be our universe, I'm not only telling about the planet, about the location in the solar system, about the whole, so if the whole universe itself is mainly known as though life can exist, now, uh, what, what happens if there are multiple universes? Instead of one universe, if there are so many universes, so now I have a lottery. In the cosmic lottery, my universe had got everything finely tuned. So that's called multiverse model. That's what now atheistic scientists who cannot believe. Because Fred Oyen said his atheism was shaken. He went into his laboratory and he was trying to work on carbon resonance. And when he was working on carbon resonance, he came on and he was shocked at the fine tuning of that parameter and he said now all the um, common sense interpretation of the data shows me that there is a super intellect behind who has monkey with physics, chemistry and biology. So he is not able to accept there is a super intellect who has monkey with physics, chemistry and biology. That's what Fred Hoyle said. And uh, these scientists, when they brought in this multiverse hypothesis, that it cannot be tested because even if there are so many universes, because when the mathematics is giving beautiful relations for multi dimensions, we are now in three dimensions, okay? Yes, why is it? And uh, uh, another is time. But if it is a five dimensional being, is there you assume? There is a five dimension, your being is in fifth dimension. The being comes to our three dimension. You cannot see the being, but the being can see you. Imagine. I believe there might be some other dimensions. There can be some other different spirit beings can be there who cannot see. But the one who created everything should be beyond everything. Instead of searching for terrestrial, extraterrestrials, you might have to think of some other beings in higher dimensions. Because something we are influenced by evil. We are influenced by satanic powers, we are influenced by angelic powers and everything but no need to worry about it because somebody who has done everything should be beyond it. That's why he should be able to go inside that wall because any higher dimension being can walk in here even you cannot see them. That's why I believe, uh, for in my knowledge I believe Jesus said people who see me have seen the father. If you see a square, it's a cube reflection. The same way, there can be many dimensions because multiverse theory says. So for them, the multiverse is showing that there is no creator. For me, that same a multi dimensions is showing that there is a creator. So this is the one which is beyond physics, astronomy, cosmology. We have, before going to biology, I can ask some questions. You said you have a question. You asked about the uh, quality of existence of what? Existence that uh, Earth is made up with a design, uh, particularly uh, for the existence of life. So why can't it be a probability? So you mean that it might be a chance? We all came out as a chance being. Yes. Uh, so based on that, my others and all could have come by chance. Everything started on its own. Yes. Right. Okay. So I think. It, thank you for this question. So uh, for her question is that. Uh, everything would have come by random chance, might be suddenly sometime a big bang would have started and slowly, slowly so many planets would have come 
slowly, slowly this earth 4.5 billion years back it would have come into picture and then we could have come into picture. Correct? That's your question. So the first, for the Big Bang to start, people understood now how the Big Bang can start. People are thinking there are so many parameters have to be fine-tuned at the beginning condition. People suggested a quantum tunneling phenomena, how the universe can tunnel out of nothing. But that theory is gone. Because the quantum fluctuation, if it has to be there, who started it? For example, I am I'm getting a bread. I am eating a bread. So I am telling you that you are giving me some bread to eat. I am telling this bread is so tasty. And who is the person who did it? So you are coming and telling me, no, nobody did it. Because I have a bread making machine. And the bread making machine did it. Now I will ask, who made the bread making machine? And who gave the recipe for the bread making machine? Right? So that is the way it goes. They push the question one step backward. Because if I ask that who made the first initial quantum tunneling phenomena, how everything started, who designed the initial conditions to go, started, and Sorry. then, any other, somebody else asked? Okay, so now, uh, and then now coming to biology, but till this time for me, I understood three concepts. If there is a designer, he cannot be part of the universe. That one should be beyond the universe. Beyond space, time and matter, that one should be. And he can be a deistic god. Deistic god is a god who started everything, who doesn't get involved in, the, in, in his creations. But for me, the um, study of biology changes the phenomena. He's not a deistic god, he's a personal god. He's involved in everything. For example, because of lack of time, I'm not showing the PPT. I'll just explain. For example, you take a horse. The horse has a big lung. Next time, one more time, I'll come with all. It will take some three, four hours. Who so all interested, we can have a discussion. See, a horse. A horse has a big lung. Because if you have a car, you need a turbocharger. You need more oxygen to run fast. So a horse has a big lung because heart also, because it can run fast. A camel its leg cannot sink and it has three eyelids and it has can store water and the um, hummingbird it, its design of this um, what is it wings it makes vortices to fly and the bird's wings it's irreducibly complex a small part you take the wings cannot function and that's why right brother study that they lift how it's generated how direction it is changing and the bird, liar bird, L-Y-R-E, go and Google. It has a two extremes inside that trachea. It can make beautiful musical notes. And there is a humpback whale. It sings over a long distance, repeating the musical notes. Bottleneck dolphins. You can see, all this you Google, it's such a beautiful, and coral reefs. It has a, a beautiful colors. And cuttlefish, it doesn't have white, but it changes its color based on the surroundings. If it's a red color place, changes its color. Why purple color changes its color? So people thought earlier, all these things somebody has designed. But Darwin came. And he said, no, there is no designer. Everything came on its own. So that's when Francis Ayala said, Darwin is the one who accomplished a design without a designer. So then, how he did that? I'll explain you. For example, I have um, a breeding. I'm just having a woollier sheep. Okay, I want a woollier sheep. Like, it has more wool so I can remove, take the wool out. So now what I do, I take a male woollier sheep and a female woollier sheep and make it to breed. After some time, some generation, I get woollier sheep, which has more wool on its body. So I do the I am the designer who is doing the design. But sometimes, if the climate is so wind, uh, so cold, what does nature does the selection? Nature does the selection of making the more woolier, woolier as per the generation. So Darwin thought, okay, might be natural selection and random variation. These are the two things 
that evolution has happened. That's why you see Darwin brought a natural selection and random variation. Then genetics came forward. Genetics said, might be it's not random variation, random mutation in the DNA. So finally they thought natural selection and random mutation in the DNA, that's called neo-Darwinism. But when I did research, and you can go read my book, it's some copies are in the library also, and my episodes will show you, and you can write to me again, so I am so happy to listen to the opposite view. So what happens is, um, he saw some beaks, some uh, birds beaks change the shape because of the change in climate, so he concluded. But he was not sure how insects came. Without insects, how can you do the flowering? Flowering plants should come because of insects. He could not explain. He said once, often a cold shudder runs through me because I'm not sure whether I have devoted my life to a fantasy. You can Google Darwin a cold shudder and you will find. He writes that in his book, An Origin of Species. He beautifully brings in that everything starts and goes off as a tree. That's called tree of life. From a bacteria, a human being has come, we came from eggs. But then recently he thought there is some intermediate species will come. That is between a whale and a fish, or between a whale and other dinosaurs, or all of these things. But till now scientists are trying to find not many intermediate species, what they thought has come. They could not find. Archaeopatrics, they thought there is a bird like dinosaurs. But finally they thought it's not an intermediate one, it is a bird. And then they found that he said that birds became dinosaurs or dinosaurs became the other one. One is warm blooded, the other one is cold blooded. How would you change the reptile to a bird? Nobody is clear. If you want to make a new animal form, I, I don't have time, I have brought in so because you need to run a single cell itself, you need so many protein, three dimensional protein folding has to come into picture. It's impossible. And uh, for uh, chromosomes, uh, apes, chromosomes, two chromosomes joined together and became a man, they said, because apes and mans, they have 90%, 80% in the junk DNA, we have identical things. But again, it has a lot of gaps. And the greatest thing is Cambrian explosion. During the Cambrian era, at one point, so many animal forms came together, the basic one and the bigger ones. There were no intermediate things. So it is a great challenge to Darwinian theory. So it looked as though each and everything was specifically formed for some purpose. Because of lack of time, I have five more minutes if you can ask me questions. So what I understood is that the tree of life is proved false. Even by you can Google all the evolutionary scientists, it's not creationist. Because I don't Google creationist thing. I Google, they found, now they have written in recent one conference, we need to bring in a new theory because evolutionarily the Darwinian method is not giving the right answer. Because you can't, no answer for intermediate spaces and no answer for Cambrian explosion and no answer for how life came from non-life. We are living beings, we are organic beings, right? How organic chemistry came from inorganic chemistry? Can you think? There is, you might have studied about Miller and Ure experiment. That made the first amino acids. But Miller and Ure experiment is thrown out even by great scientists. Because they used a trap. They used a different atmosphere which was not present. And also they could produce only a few amino acids. And the amino acids are both 50% left handed and right handed. Whereas that is in the true na nature, it is not both equally 50% left and right handed. If you are a biologist, you will ex understand. Or I can explain in detail next time. So this is the way, for me, <coughs> I'm just going to complete it because uh, my flight, otherwise I will miss. So what I wanted to say is, everything pointed to me, there is a creator behind this. Why I did this research? Because I did not have a purpose at once upon a time. I did not, I did not have a good uh, thought about me. I had a very low self-esteem. I never imagined I can become a scientist when I was doing my engineering. After becoming a scientist, I thought, okay, you always listen to the people around you who speak about
about you and you listen to those lies and believe that you are worth for nothing. That's what I did and that's why I went into a period of depression, just walking towards the path of suicide. Then I was doing my PhD. <coughs> I was doing my PhD in IIC. That time I got a severe fever which lasted for around five days. And I did not take it when I was admitted, it turned into a massive pneumonia. Coronavirus gives pneumonia, I think all of you know. I got some virus and it turned into pneumonia. Can you hear me? Then don't talk, then you can hear. <laughs> so I was uh, put on ventilator because people thought I have died. I was put on ventilator. In that ventilator, I, at that time I had my fist against God. I thought, there is no God. If he is a God, he is not a good God. That's what I decided. And that's when I saw the vision of Jesus. I saw the vision of the cross. I saw his blood coming and covering my sins. And I heard a voice, I'm giving you new life. And all the five days I was there, I felt his presence. And I came out, something was telling me, read the Bible. I wanted to know who is this one, whether I got my vision is true or not. started reading. It changed me completely, you know. He became my psychotherapist. Even physically, I looked older earlier, I, um, emotionally, every way. I couldn't sleep earlier, I got good sleep, everything he changed. That's when I wanted to know whether this one is rationally true. Because I could see him exper experimentally, but rationally, intelligently. That's why last four years I did research and wrote this book. If you can subscribe to my channel, I can, and you can write to me and we can be in touch. Thank you.